sexuality of all kinds. And that changes so that, you know, if, if we had had gene editing in 1955, maybe one of the first targets would have been homosexuality because everybody would have said, well, it's certainly better to get rid of that. We don't want that around. <laughs> and in fact, that would have been a mistake, right? Right. So this is the, the biggest concern, I think, actually. So a lot of um, disability rights advocates argue that this whole project of getting rid of diseases is just inter inherently, um, well, anti people with disabilities. It's anti. Well, I don't go that far. Yeah, I don't go that far. <laughs> yeah, that's that's to be an ableist. I don't. I, yeah, don't a... I don't think that's the case. Um, no, I don't either. But let's take this argument seriously. Should we uh, have humans be born with some disease just to decrease, um, well, uh, discrimination? So perhaps it's just the case. Um, well, think of particular, it, it can be any uh, disability, right? And if it's a small number of people in a society that only have that, then it's not really well taken seriously. Take people in wheelchairs. In Germany, uh, almost every place is accessible by wheelchairs in comparison to other countries. And that's a very good thing. And we should do that, obviously. But the worry is that if we treat disabilities um, as something we should get rid of, then we will look at people with disabilities as inferior people. I don't think that's the case at all. I think we should get rid of disabilities. I think disabilities are a bad thing. What counts as a disability is if it makes your life um, go worse. And obviously, if there's a lot of discrimination going on in a society, then this right. itself can make something uh, count as a disability. So let's con, uh, consider homosexuality. 1950s, it's not that it makes your life go... So the thing that ma would make your life go worse is discrimination itself. And that would make it count as a disease in this account. If you That's think of point. statistics... Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And, and, and look, I, look, I totally agree that there's certain disabilities that I think most people would say fix if you can. If somebody's going to be born without arms, arms and legs, I think that any rational human being would say, yes, let's correct that. Um, my, my, my main concern is when you start getting rid of a lot of these other diseases, um, which I agree with you should probably be the case, but then you have a huge problem with population, right? I mean, you, then you're going to have other diseases being going to, they're going to come out and new diseases we've never even knew about that may all of a sudden be even worse because of the fact you have more people living and, and, and longevity increases as well. Has that actually been factored in as well in, in your studies? Walter? <laughs> So this whole account is a very individualist one, right? Parents need to be concerned with the well-being of their own children, even if this has negative consequences for the overall society. Um, I don't think those consequences are that harsh, which I go uh, to lengths in my account to defend. But even if that would be the case, I think it's outweighed by the obligation to make the life of your child go better. And if there are such consequences, then it's the job of the state to put limitations there. Perhaps we need to change the environment or we need to put limits on what kinds of genetic uh, enhancements are legal. Because some genetic enhancements, as I mentioned, might have very negative consequences for everyone around you. Um, I, uh, this was, this was absolutely, um, fascinating. We got to, uh, wrap up now because we have another show at eight o'clock that we have to, uh, get ready for. We are, um, triple threatened today, but, um, I'm going to let you guys kind of wrap up your, your stances and your points and, um, also talk about what you have coming up. If anything, um, anything you want to talk about to kind of close us out. So, um, Dr. Gart, you want to start us out? Yeah, I, I think this has been fascinating, and I'd, I'd like to really thank Walter for coming on and expressing the views that he has. And I, I will say that to some extent, I think I still have concerns, which I, I mentioned, all of them. But I think you made some very good points that have kind of 
you know, make me thinking a little bit more about this, um, especially what you just said about, you know, having to take responsibility for possible interactions. And I, to be honest, you also said something that really impressed me, which I hadn't thought about, which is the possibility of reversing a genetic change, which I guess could be done. I, I guess technically that is possible. Um, it's also possible that it might not be able to be done depending on the circumstances. But I think we agree that, um, you know, the environment is very important, that um, that we have to be cautious before we go whole hog into, you know, changing the genome and, and, uh, and, and passing it down. Uh, and, I, and I still have some reservations, but they're more, again, they're more questions. And I think a lot of them are philosophical. And uh, this is um, the area for philosophers, ethicists, uh, people who really can see all sides of a, of a picture um, to really explore more more thoroughly. And, you know, it's out there. The technique is there. The technology is coming along quickly. The good news is we're going to make a lot of people have much better lives. That's definite. We're definitely going to cure some bad genetic diseases. We're going to prevent a lot of bad genetic diseases. And that's wonderful. I mean, that's a tremendous advance for humanity. Awesome. Okay. Walter? Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, this was very nice talking to you. I didn't have to defend the view that having humans be born with legs and with arms is actually better than having them born without them. <laughs> Which actually I have to defend sometimes. Uh, so this has been what? really beneficial. Yes. Um, some people have extreme views. But if you look at statistics, then humans are inherently bioconservatives. Even the most liberal people hold views that they somehow are still like, well, we shouldn't do this because it's somehow still playing God. But perhaps in the sense, we should play God because we can make the lives of millions of people in the future go better. Um, my intuition here was that many people, their only interaction with this whole issue is some sci-fi show, some novel like Brave New World, and all these shows depict these technologies in a rather negative light. And I think we can look in the future with some optimism that genetic engineering can actually make the world a better place. That is, if we consider research into the environment and limits the state should put on particular uh, alterations of the genome. All right. Um, do you want to let people know where they can go uh, like to your website to find out more information if they want to follow well, my, up? My, um, website we'll is called, my website is called walterwhite.com. Pretty easy to find, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> my my article is also uh, publicly, publicly available, so everyone can download it. It's not written in a very philosophical jargon. I've put it in rather easy terms so everyone can understand it. And it's actually a real pleasure. I think I have more than 2,000 downloads on the paper, which is really rare the, because most philosophy papers, they're rather in the domain of perhaps 40 downloads and only people in your own domain read it. But I think philosophy needs to get out there and talk to people in the public about issues that concern them. And genetic alterations, genetic enhancements, that's an issue that will be relevant in the future. And that's perhaps much closer than you might expect. Excellent. Well, this is probably one of my favorite talks that we've done. I, um, the, it, it makes you think about things that, that you wouldn't normally before, I think. And you both raised very good points. Um, so I'm still just as in the middle, I think, on the issue as I was before so uh, <laughs> i, I love job. these types of discussions these are my all-time favorite yeah. types of discussions yeah good job um well thanks again guys uh we'll see everyone else here at eight o'clock uh, nate talks to you will be here also craig reed is gonna um drop by and we're going to uh discuss the question can you have a meaningful life without god so um join us for that at eight o'clock and we we'll only need 17 more subs for 10K. 17 more to go. Oh, Can we hey. do it before the next show?
We might hit it. We might hit it. Let's see if we can do it, guys. Come on. 17 in an hour. Let's do it. Uh, if, if you do that, we'll, we'll make Steve uh, do the show shirtless. <laughs> no, we, no, we won't. No, no. <laughs> Cut the camera. Cut the cameras. 